the lesson is from the epistle of blessed peter the apostle chapter 4 verses 7 to 11 dearly beloved be prudent and watch in prayers but before all things have a constant mutual charity among yourselves for charity covereth a multitude of sins using hospitality one towards another without murmuring as every man hath received grace ministering the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any man speak, let him speak as the words of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the power which God administereth, that in all things God may be honored through Jesus Christ our Lord. The continuation of the Gospel according to St. John, at that time, Jesus said to his disciples, When the paraclete cometh, whom I will send you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who proceedeth from the Father, he shall give testimony of me, and you shall give testimony, because you are with me from the beginning. These things have I spoken to you, that you may not be scandalized. They will put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the hour cometh, that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth a service to God. And these things will they do to you, because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things I have told you, that when the hour shall come, you may remember that I told you. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. Today is the Sunday after the Ascension. This Holy Mass is being offered for the people of our parish. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, our Spring All Souls Day. Consider to hear Holy Mass tomorrow for the war dead. There's a brief, uh, a slightly altered schedule here tomorrow. There will only be adoration in the morning and the evening mass will not be held, but the Latin mass will be offered at 1.15. And tomorrow is the feast of St. Joan of Arc with the commemoration of St. Felix I. Also, the other shipment of the icons which were advertised in the bulletin uh, coming from Poland arrived the other day, so they're all here. Many of the titles of Our Lady came in. So again, they are available in the parish office. Uh, go in and, and look at them. There's many different titles of the saints, of Our Lord, and of Our Lady, and of some of the uh, seasons of the church. Velia Silva, God rest her soul, used to arrange the flowers here for the various celebrations and feast days. And so since she has gone to the Lord, we are looking for a few people to put flower arrangements together, particularly for the upcoming Feast of Corpus Christi, where we have the outdoor altars, but also the octave of those daily masses in front of the exposed Blessed Sacrament and those uh, processions following. So if you have a talent for flower arranging, if you like to do that, if you're interested in helping, please leave your name and contact information at the parish office so that we can contact you closer to the Feast of Corpus Christi to help in arranging the flowers for the altar. Also, we are in need of more knights of the altar, more altar servers. Two young men have signed up, but we would like a few more before we begin a training session. So if you would like to serve at the altar, please contact the parish office and also leave your name and contact information. This Saturday is the Vigil of Pentecost. Following the old discipline, it is a day of fast and partial abstinence. You can read the rules for that in the parish bulletin, so please do take that and read it for that and reminders about what I spoke about this morning and also further uh, upcoming parish events. Be prudent and watch in prayers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. 
My dearly beloved in Christ, this Sunday is like a prolongation of the Feast of the Ascension and a preparation for next Sunday's Feast of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost will come with the outpouring of his seven gifts and twelve fruits. I would like to speak today about the gift of fortitude because of the uh, gospel today, our Lord warning us that persecution will come and that we will be put to death for our belief in him. And also if the epistle was to continue, the next lines of the epistle also make mention of that very fact of impending persecution and trial. And so fortitude teaches us how a Christian should handle those moments. Fortitude denotes a firmness of mind in doing good and avoiding evil, particularly when it is difficult or dangerous to do so, and the confidence to overcome all obstacles, even deadly ones, by virtue of the assurance of everlasting life. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches that the principal act of fortitude is not to attack, but to stand firm in the midst of dangers and to endure struggles, opposition, privations, and persecutions with a strong spirit. In the spiritual life, we need not only difficulties which can be surmounted and overcome once and for all by a strong act of courage, but we encounter, and this much more frequently, difficult, painful situations from which it is impossible to escape and which willingly or unwillingly we must face. There are physical ailments which exhaust us and prevent us from extending our activity as we would wish. There are moral sufferings caused by our own temperamental deficiencies or by contact with persons who are opposed to us or do not understand us. Or again, there is the pain of seeing our loved ones suffer without our being able to relieve them. There is the experience of separation from our friends and loneliness of heart. There are also spiritual troubles due to aridity, interior darkness, weariness of mind, temptations, and scruples. In addition to these, there are problems in everyday life, fatigue, and difficulties inherent in our everyday duties. We know that all of these are planned by God for our sanctification and our good. Nevertheless, that does not prevent us from feeling the weight of them. Suffering is never pleasant, and though we will to accept all for the love of God, we are sometimes tempted to react, to give up, to shake off the yoke, or we are weighed down by sadness and discouragement. What remedy is there for this? There is the one which our blessed Lord suggested to the apostles after telling them of the persecutions that they would endure, and that is in patience. Patience is the virtue which permits us to live in a state of suffering, hardship, and privation without losing our peace and serenity. It enables us to remain firm amid storms, contradictions, and dangers without becoming irritated or despondent, without being deterred by them. Christian patience is the voluntary acceptance of suffering in view of God and eternal happiness, an acceptance sustained by the knowledge 
that suffering is absolutely necessary to purify us from sin, to atone for our faults, and to prepare to meet God. Christian patience incites us to accept suffering serenely and gradually to esteem and even to love it, not because we see it as an end in life, but rather as a necessary means for attaining the end, which is love of God and union with him. If Jesus willed to live a life of martyrdom and to die on the cross in order to kindle the fire of charity in us and restore us to friendship with God, how can we expect to attain the plenitude of love and intimacy with God if we do not follow in his footsteps? Let us then embrace suffering with the same sentiments which our Lord had, namely, to do the Heavenly Father's will, to atone for sin, and to give him proof of our love, and all with complete trust and confidence in God. Turn your moments of anxiety and uncertainty into a moment of prayer and an act of confidence in God. Jesus, I trust in thee. Sacred Heart of Jesus, I believe in thy love for me. <laughs> Most Sacred Heart of Jesus, I place all my trust in thee. Let me not be disappointed. Somewhat popular now is the Surrender Novena. You may have heard about it. Our Lord revealed this particular prayer to the servant of God, Don Dolindo Rotolo, who was for a short time the spiritual director of Padre Pio. Don Dolindo died in 1970 in Naples at the age of 88. He called himself Mary's little old man. And he lived in such great poverty that his own family turned away from him. He opened his arms without fear to embrace contagious sick people, caressing and kissing them. He offered himself as a victim soul for all mankind and was afflicted with many sufferings, including complete paralysis for the last 10 years of his life but he suffered everything with joy because he suffered for love. Don Dolindo also had the gift of prophecy, writing in 1965 that, quote, a new John will rise out of Poland with heroic steps to break the chains beyond the boundaries imposed by the communist tyranny. This prophecy was fulfilled some 13 years later in the election of Pope John Paul II to the chair of St. Peter. Many miracles have been attributed to Don Dolino's intercession both before and after his death. And so he received from the lips of our Lord the words of the surrender novena. And in part, our Lord says in this prayer, this is our Lord speaking. You see evil growing instead of weakening. Do not worry. Close your eyes and say to me with faith, thy will be done. You take care of it. I say to you that I will take care of it and that I will intervene as does a doctor and I will accomplish miracles when they are needed. Repose in me believing in my goodness, and I promise you by my love that if you say, you take care of it, I will take care of it. What reassuring words from our Savior. It takes humility to surrender to God's will and to trust in divine providence. The, hum the humble soul conscious of his nothingness, trusts in God, 
be more convinced that God can make use of him to accomplish great things. The truly humble person is not afraid to encourage himself to attempt great things for God, and this very attitude helps him greatly to make progress. The more confidence we have in God, the stronger we shall become with his divine strength. The more intense our love, the greater will become our capability of doing arduous things for God, including dying to self-will and self-love and battling those imperfections and temptations which assail us so often. Sustained by confidence and love, we shall be able to soar very high without fear of dangers or falls. Our Lady, the Queen of Apostles, is with them now in the upper room, praying that first novena for the coming of the Holy Ghost. She is his spouse. Let us then ask her for the grace to open our hearts to receive the Holy Ghost when he comes next Sunday in great power with his gifts and fruits, so we might remain strong in the battles of this life, whatever they might be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.